welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Old Saybrook First Selectman, Carl Fortuna. Carl, welcome. How are you? I'm well, Pete. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you, my friend. Here, here's a virtual handshake. I know. I'll take a, vir- I'll take, I'll take a virtual handshake. Yeah. So, Carl, what's, go- what's, go- what's going on in town, even though we're under, you're, un- you're, you're under restriction, I'm under restriction. This is not our studios, and we are not together tonight. No, sadly. Um, I know. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I assume it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world and what's going on locally and how we're handling that. Sure. Uh, we, you know, it's a public health emergency, as you know, Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, on a, on a very hyper-local level, this is almost more of a public education emergency than it is a public health emergency. In Old Saybrook, you know, we have a population of 10,000 or, or so. Uh, we've only had 20 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Okay. We, yeah, we presumably have a few more. Uh, as we all know that there's all these asymptomatic carriers out there. But we're presuming we have 40, we have 20 that are confirmed. But really think about what's happening in the public education world. You know, the kids had to get, they got kicked out of school. The teachers had to do something they never did before. And, you know, they're teaching from home. Kids are trying to get through their grades. And I, you know, as as you can imagine, if you're a senior in high school or a senior in college, this is the worst thing that could ever happen, right? You know, exactly. Those those are the times when you want to have a little fun. And so I I have to give a lot of credit uh, locally and I'm sure statewide uh, to the way the public education system pivoted. Uh, mm-hmm. and went to the at-home learning. I mean, that, that's a pretty remarkable thing to do. I'm not saying that the kids are learning like they would be if they were in school every day, but right. you know, they have to sign in every day, they have to do homework every day. And uh, so it's been, it's been uh, pretty interesting uh, from that perspective. Um, obviously, you know, the whole uh, way we run town government is different, uh, but uh, from my angle, we meet every day. I meet every day uh, with the chief of police, who's our emergency management director. You may know that. Yep. Uh, I, we conference call with uh, Jan Peruccio, the superintendent of schools, the director of operations at the schools, the finance director for the town, youth and family services. Um, you know, we IT is involved in that. We we also involve the ambulance, fire. Uh, and a dispatcher from um, Middlesex Hospital. So we do that every day. Um, and, well, I shouldn't say every day, at least five days a week, sometimes seven days a week, uh, just to make sure that we bat all the issues around that need to be discussed on a local level every day. And I learn things every day. I learn what the schools are doing. I learn if there's new cases. Do you know Scott Martinson at the um, Regional Health District? I know the name, but I've never, I actually have never had a chance to interview Scott. So have, um, would you like to? Because I think he'd be yes. looking for you to interview. I would. Uh, yeah, so Scott uh, is also on the call. So Scott gives us a little bit of an update uh, from the public health point of view. He's the executive director of the regional health district. So um, it's been, look, I mean, you're at home. <laughs> It's been awful, right? Yeah. I mean, it's been awful. Uh, this isn't, you know, I, I understand why we're doing it, but uh, you know, you, you live in Clinton, I live in Old Sandbrook, obviously, and to see the downtown as dead as it is, and to see stores not open, and you know, people not parked, and not in, in the Kate, the Catherine Hepburn Theater, you know, no cars parked in front of the Kate for the last m- month, six weeks, is sad. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I, I'll just, it, it, I go to work every day and, you know, you try to think about the other side and I do go to work every day. I do go to town hall. We have a skeleton staff, but I've been going to work every day. Um, and I look at the Kate and I, I look at Main Street and it's sad, but what we are working towards is the other side, right? We want to make sure that uh, in the recovery phase of this pandemic, we are ready to go. and. Um, Absolutely. And while Absolutely. there's a little bit of a downside now uh, that uh, is not particularly uplifting, um, 
you have to we're we're looking at the other side and and you've seen the numbers lately the numbers are good in connecticut they're getting better they're yeah. less hospitalized uh every day in fact um as we tape this show tonight there's less people in the hospital due to COVID-19 than there were two weeks ago. So that means- that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a fantastic thing. That means we're heading in the right direction. And so I am hopeful that the governor will release some of his uh, restrictions out of his, his executive orders and that we can get to a better place uh, soon. Exactly. Now with the restrictions and everything going on, how does that affect day-to-day -day operations in the town hall? Yeah, so like many places, Pete, like many town halls all across the state, um, our doors are locked. But yeah. when you call, when Pete Mazzetti, if you were to call the town hall and say, hey, Carl, I need to check a building file or I need to check a, a real estate um, a, a file uh, with the fire marshal, uh, we have people in town hall right. come to the front door. I would let you in. You have to have a mask on. I have to have a mask on. That's the newest executive order from the governor. Absolutely. Masks. Um, but we have a skeleton staff, but every department has someone working there. And, you know, when the governor four weeks ago or so issued his stay at home order. Yep. Um, basically, if you can stay at home, please stay at home. When he issued that order, um, I went around town hall and I said, if you can work from home, you're allowed to work from home. But this is mm -hmm. not this is not a don't work order. It's a stay at home and work order if you can. So we have people in town hall who can't work at home. The town, the town clerk, you can't record a mortgage if someone's at home. The tax collector, you want to pay your taxes, you gotta see it, you know, you you, you usually want to see somebody. Exactly. Um, so we have people in town hall every day. I'm in town hall every day. I answer the, you know, people are getting me when they call typically. Um, wow. Well, but we, my phones are being forwarded, but I try to get them before they get forwarded uh, so that I can deal with something. Usually people want something. And if right. I can do it right then and there, I do. So, right. uh, but the interaction with the public, as you might imagine, is very different. I mean, my job is an elected job. I'm first selectman of the town of Old Seabrook. Every day, people used to come into my office to either say, tell me something they didn't like, tell me something they did like, or just to mm -hmm. shoot the breeze with me. And right. um, that doesn't happen anymore. And I miss that because right. you know you miss the human interaction. You you're not. Are you going to work these days? Yes, I am. You are going to work. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nice to be able to have that human interaction. Exactly. But yeah, we have people, people are there. The interaction with the public is a lot different, but um, I've been very clear to everybody on staff, even though we are in this situation, we are here to serve the public, period. That's and, right. Um, we may be closed, we may be limited in what we can do, but whatever mm -hmm. we can do, we will do. Just so you know, um, I talked to my building official and my fire marshal. They say it's very busy. The contractors in town are still right. busy. They're still renovating. And my building official tells me he's got a stack of new permits. So the good news is people are still moving forward with projects. And even some of our commercial projects are still moving forward, which is good. Um, and... Uh, so it's, it's been a, um, a different way to do business, but we're doing it. Okay. Now, with, with what's going on, how does that affect the budget for the town? Um, well, so obviously we have three months, a little less than three months left in this yep. fiscal year. Yes. Um, it's going to be difficult for us to open our beaches on time, open uh, mini golf on time. Uh, but we do plan on doing both at some point. So a budget is made up of your revenues, what you plan to take in and your expenditures. Right. And you plan on uh, having a few less revenues come in 
uh, for the end of the year. Uh, but we also are taking a look every week at our expenditures mm -hmm. to see if we can under expend before the end of the year so that we end up in the black, not in the red. Um, we passed our budget, uh, the Board of Finance, according to the governor's executive orders, yeah. passed, passed a budget about a month ago. Um, so that's for fiscal year 21, beginning on July 1 of this year. And uh, we'll be closely monitoring that budget because that's the budget where we could have a shortfall. And by the way, Pete, I just want to, I received, you know, Betsy Guerra, who was on your show last week. Yes. I watched a very good interview. So I, I watched that. Um, so Betsy has been very involved in all the governor's executive orders. Yep. Um, and there have been 30 executive orders that the governor has come out with. And 16 of them have applied to the municipalities in the state of Connecticut. And Betsy, uh, who works for COST, Connecticut yeah. Council of Small Towns, uh, just for your viewers, has been very involved in many of those executive orders to help make them workable documents for the towns. And one of them was with, with regard to budget formation and, and passing a, a town budget, which, as you know, frequently goes to the public in Clinton, you know, yeah. better than most um, in Clinton. Uh, and now people will not get a chance to vote on that budget because it's going to be passed, I think, in Clinton by your town council. That's and correct. In Old Saybrook by the Board of Finance. And, you know, that's not very democratic, the small no. d. Um, and uh, I've read a lot of articles uh, from all over the state about citizens who are not very happy with that. But that is the governor's executive order to keep people from gathering in one large. And, you know, you can't have a town meeting on Zoom where you literally. So in a town meeting form of government like Old Saver has. Yeah. If I were to go to a town meeting to buy a new truck that we wanted mm -hmm. to buy. Right. I mean, you have to make sure everybody is a resident of Old Saybrook. And you can't do that on Zoom. Right, correct. And, and not only that, when people get into a town meeting, they have the right to make a motion to change what's on the, t what you're voting on. And that can happen pursuant to Zoom, you know, if you're virtual. So the governor, you know, passed an executive order and we are operating under that executive order, but it is definitely far less democratic. Um, and that has some people upset, not necessarily in Old Saybrook, but in other towns in the state where people are used to having a lot more of a voice in budgeting or purchases or uh, how their town government is operated. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, go ahead. I was going to say, you, you said that the Board of Finance passed the budget for the town of Old Saver, because I mean, they set the mill rate? They did. Okay. The budget, so our, our, our budget was, um, our budget was up 1%. Okay. The Board of Ed in the town. 1% is probably either the cost of inflation or a little bit less. Um, we lost some we lost some value on our grand list um for the coming fiscal year uh okay. we did a revaluation ah. and we lost some value so as a result of that we have a few less revenues coming in mm -hmm. so even though the bu the budget was up one percent our mill rate is going to go from 19.75 to 20.05. So it's going up three tenths of a mil. It's a oh. relatively small increase. Um, we really tried to hold the line this year, um, but we have employed, we're, we're a service community. I mean, our, our municipalities are in the service business, right? Yes. Um, and so, you know, people still want their roads plowed. They, they're still going to want to get rid of their trash. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to want police and fire services so it's difficult for municipalities in the service uh, business to uh, find very large reductions and um, 
we had a, a very tight budget, a 1% budget, like I said, but it did um, result in the mill rate going up somewhat slightly. Okay. But we don't use reserves to get, I won't get into that, but we don't use gimmicks in our budget. Our budgets are um, um, completely uh, honest budgets. We don't use any off budget funds to throw into the budget to depress the mill rate like a lot of other towns do. Um, but let me just, I just want to say one, or, we have to, do you take breaks? <laughs> I'm no, sorry. no, no keep going. Straight in. Well, you know, I don't want to, and I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of just doing all the talking. I don't know if you have That's any. That's okay. How are you doing in all this? I want to know how you're doing, Pete. I'm doing great. I'm doing yeah. great. It is, it, 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 it is, it is, it is a different world because you know as well as I do, Pete Mazzetti doesn't like being cooped up and quarantined. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's, a, to, it's a totally different world being Pete Mazzetti and having to, having to do the, having to do the, but it, the good thing is doing the show through Zoom and through social media and doing, doing everything this way. It's actually a lot, it's a lot of fun. Like I was telling, or like I was telling somebody the other day that before the pandemic and before we started doing Zoom, editions of the Pete Mazzetti show. My last show in studio at Valley Shore Community Television was the 26th of February. And my wow. guest was actually Paul Formica and my second oh. guest was Betsy from Cost. Oh, so you had Betsy on then and Betsy on again. Yes. Yeah, good. That's good. She's a very good source of information. She but, is. But you had sent me you had sent me a couple invites and I'm like, Pete, I don't think we're gonna be able to get in the studio. Um, you had sent me an invite. You thought yeah. we were going to get in the studio, and I'm like, it doesn't look like we're getting in the studio anytime. No, no, no. We can, we can, we can do it through this. That's works for me. It is remarkable how much business you can actually conduct. Um, right. Video conference and telecom. Um, I mean, our board of finance meetings have gone mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, and I've been on, uh, we've all been on more telecoms than we ever want to be on in our lives. So, right. um, so anyway, yeah. So as we were talking, just very quickly on the budgets, um, yeah. you know, so we're, we're worried about the fiscal, um, we're in fiscal 20. Uh, we think we're going to be good there. Uh, and then the next budget is fiscal 21. And that is the budget that we're really going to have to watch like a hawk mm -hmm. because if the unemployment rate stays up as a result of this pandemic and people yeah. being out of work, it's possible our tax collection rate might go down. And if our okay. tax collection rate goes down even a tenth of a percent or, or two tenths of a percent, um, that could that can result in you know a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar shortfall. So we'll be watching that extremely closely as we go through the year from July one to June 30th of 21. Um, and even though it's very early to start talking about it, when we start building the budget for fiscal year 22, right. which, which begins a year from now in July, mm -hmm. we start building that budget though in no November of this year, January, February. So we'll ha already have really good numbers as they're coming in in fiscal 21 to build the budget in fiscal 22. Um, I'm probably going to ask several of my collective bargaining un unions to see if they'd be willing to come off some of their uh, their pay demands, maybe take a 0% raise in one of the years. Um, that would be something I might be looking to, but obviously the town may have to give them, give a little bit, like not change any medical insurance. Um, but uh, we're going to be looking to try to deal with our unions a little bit to cut the costs a little bit. Um, but it's a different way to do business. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I've never tried to grow facial hair in my life. Yeah, I know. This is, this and, is weird. Carl's, Carl's got a beard. I figured if, if there's ever a time, it's during a yeah. pandemic, right? <laughs> no, one, no one sees me except on the Pete Mazzetti show. So, <laughs> so... If, if, except for this Zoom, no one is seeing me, and I exactly I may regret yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks, Pete. Uh, it's so, awesome. but one uh, one other thing we're doing in town hall, we're we're taking a look at how we're going to do business moving forward. Right. So yeah, 
Um, the employees uh, get a little bit nervous about mm -hmm. people coming into town hall. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to communicate with the public as much as we can to tell them if you can do something remotely, do it remotely. And I think yeah. people are realizing how easy it is. Send me an email. Um, send me an email and you know we'll take care of it like that and you'll have it tomorrow. Or come to town hall, we'll meet you at the front door. Or we'll email you an application and you can return it to us tomorrow. So I think people are really realizing how much easier it can be and they may not have to come into town hall. Our tax collector, all the tax bills that go out on July mm -hmm. 1 are going to, you know Barry Maynard, right? In town oh, hall. Yeah. Oh yeah. He is sending out a return envelope so you, normally you don't get a return envelope in your tax bill and it, it's going to say stay safe pay by mail so a lot of people who don't want to necessarily go into town hall which exactly. is a heavily trafficked place can now may say hey i'm going to put a stamp on this and i'm going to send it to town hall so we're going to communicate with the public that there may be uh better more efficient ways of doing business than actually coming into town hall. We're right. also going to look at any physical uh, changes we can make in town hall. You see all the plexiglass um, barriers that they're putting up at all the stores at Stop and Shop or anything. Yep. We're probably going to do some of those in town hall. That's a very easy fix for our employees to make them feel a little bit uh, comfortable, more comfortable. Right. And um, we're also going to look at how maybe we can rearrange town hall for traffic patterns. Uh, so when you come into town hall, you won't have to figure out by asking someone where to go. It's going to be super clear. You know, you're going to walk in and maybe we'll have someone there to greet you. Um, and maybe we'll rotate some of our secretaries uh, to greet people to, to maybe, uh, to, to make sure that people don't wander all over town hall and that they're um, more efficient in their use of time and uh, and uh, get to where they need to go right away. So we're really looking at, you know, I think it was um, Rahm Emanuel, mm -hmm. in, in the Barack Obama administration. Mm -hmm. and That's I, right. I think he said during the 08, 09 crisis, um, don't let, don't, I, you know, I'm going to mess up the quote. It was something like, don't waste a crisis, you know, right. use, use it to your advantage to make changes. Right. Um, and he got, he got absolutely crushed for saying that, but look, it, we're in a bit of, we're in a crisis. We're in a mm -hmm. pandemic, public health crisis. There may, there, there are going to be good things that come out of this. There are going to be ways that, you know, Pete Mazzetti communicates better with his, with his guests, you can be right. home and do a show. You know, your producer can now, you know, it's, it's really, you've done three shows now. It's really easy. Exactly. Uh, so uh, I think we're all learning that there may be, um, this may teach us better ways to do business and, or at least allow us to do business just as easily in person uh, and do it by telecom or video conference. Exactly. Um, but so we're not, you know, we are, uh, while we are managing the pandemic every day as it goes on locally, as we're doing everything we need to do, we're mm -hmm. also looking forward. We're also planning um, for when we do reopen our doors three months from now, a month from now, hopefully, or, right. and, and what, what are we going to look like in a year? So we're, we're there right now. We're already working on that. <clears throat> and most importantly, we're looking forward to reopening the town so that people can go out to dinner, grab a beer, grab a cheeseburger, and um, go to the Kate and enjoy a show. Exactly. Right, Pete? Exactly, Carl. And that's we'll have you, a cup of coffee with Carl Fortuna. We want to, you and I need to meet for a coffee when, when all the <laughs> cafes open, like we did that one other time, right? I was going to say, I, 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 I think we need to, and I think actually – a good guest for me sometime down the road would be Scott from the health district. I'll get you his contact information. Okay. Yeah. He'd be a great guest for you. Maybe when this dies down a little bit. Oh, ab 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 absolutely. Maybe when this dies down a little bit, have you, him and I on together. So stay healthy. You too. Okay. 
and uh, to all your your audience, stay healthy. And uh, there's another side to this, and we all look forward to it. Absolutely. On behalf of Carl, Carl for team, thanks for stopping by for a little bit. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Pete. On behalf of Carl Fortuna, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next time.